no. But utterly farcical it was that yet another Labor member would suggest this afternoon that only that discredited party has a coherent plan for restoring this nation's health and securing long-term economic growth. Nothing could be further from the truth. That's right. Absolutely no one is fooled by the suggestion, and members opposite rightly look sheepish when they trot it out. No. Mr Cunliffe's prescription is a mixture of pie-in-the-sky unreality and head-in-the-sand ignorance of the challenges we face. Only that member could achieve such an anatomical absurdity. Michael Cullen, when he left office nearly three years ago, boasted that he was bequeathing a decade of deficits to his successors. Right. After squandering a decade of the most favourable economic conditions that have existed in my lifetime, Labor's legacy was to promote middle-class welfare, increase government spending at twice the rate of revenue, encourage an explosion in bureaucracy at the expense of the delivery of frontline services, and make a raft of promises and commitments that they had neither the ability nor the intention to fund. Despite the recession and the severity of the Canterbury earthquakes, in just under three years under the stewardship of John Key and Bill English, we have improved the outlook markedly. The Ministers for the Environment and of Trade have already highlighted most of those gains. Most of us agree that we want to attract talented expatriate New Zealanders home, and when Mr Nash is offshore in the next three years, he'll probably be hoping we'll find a way to bring him home too. No one pretends that it's easy to achieve that. But nothing in Labor's prescription <laughs> announced to date will do anything but exacerbate the problem. Which of these Labor policies will bring our talented young people home? More taxes for responsible investors? Higher taxes that will hit those who are currently earning good incomes in New York or London or Sydney? The prospect of greater borrowing offshore and a bigger deficit compromising our international credit rating? More government spending on feel-good schemes while the debt reaches record levels and future generations are left to mop up? Well, of course the answer is no. It's absolute madness. Distorting the tax system by introducing ineffective exemptions and layers of complexity will provide no significant benefits to taxpayers and consumers, but it will add greatly to administrative costs of businesses and the bureaucracy of administering our tax system. While a number of people in my city would like to see more government spending for a particular program or pet project, and that's fair enough because we all would from time to time, not one of my constituents has told me that Labor's prescription of new taxes, irresponsible spending and more government borrowing is the answer. Not one person. Only Labor members of the New Zealand Parliament can be oblivious to the international economic situation at present. The American debt crisis, the experiences of Ireland, Greece, Portugal and so on. Fortunately, Mr Speaker, the New Zealand public are much more aware of those challenges and better informed about the national-led government's focused and effective program to avoid those circumstances which would be utterly devastating for our country. So the choice for voters on the 26th of November will be between a government that is well led by a Prime Minister who commands widespread respect and support for his vision, his talent and his experience, and an opposition that is divided, demoralised and only stands behind their ineffective leader at the moment because none of them wants to take on the poison chalice this close to the election. No doubt later this afternoon and tonight, Labor members will again waste the time of the House with pointless contributions in support of one of their own measures which no party in this House opposes, as they have done on every Members' Day for months. Those tactics, Mr Speaker, speak volumes about their lack of focus and purpose, their complete disconnection from the things that matter to New Zealand, and they illustrate the total lack of fitness of the Labour opposition to return to government. Meanwhile, we in, on this side of the House have been applying ourselves to the issues that do matter to New Zealanders with considerable success. In my electorate in Hamilton West, Three quarters of the taxpayers now pay an income tax rate of no more than 17.5 per cent. That's a fantastic result. We've seen 100,000 homes insulated so far under the government's e e efficiency figure. Not just in Hamilton, no, this is around the country. 
We're seeing around the country 1.4 billion spent on early childhood education, the highest ever. Stuart Nash. 